Welcome back to SnowRunner, guys, and in this video, we are actually going to be taking a look at a second-gen Dodge project by Frog, which is actually featured in this pack, which also contains a couple of other things, like, for example, a single-cap Cat Eye, a Ram Charger, a Cat Eye Pre-Runner, but we're not really going to be focusing on those in this video. Now, this truck is actually not to be confused with the Big Moose 3500, which is Rexy and Risky's truck, aka the r, &R Customs truck. You guys know that truck from the highlight video that I did on it as well as um, its coverage on the streams. Now, there is some new content coming with that truck very, very soon though, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Now, it, without any further ado, let's go ahead and dive into these two trucks. Now, as I said before, there are two variants of the second gen in this pack. There is a extended cab and a single cab. Now, they both have similar options. Both are also in, uh, they have Red's Gooseneck enabled, so you can do, um, whatever kind of hauling missions you want. You can haul both cargo and vehicles, and the customization options are pretty similar. So, what we're going to be doing in this video and for this test is we're actually going to be focusing on the extended cab, because whereas you guys have seen the single cab in one of my recent streams, I have not shown the extended cab yet on my channel. Whoa! Is that, like, is that window rolled down? Oh, that's, like, oh, that's such a weird touch. Wait a minute. Is it just the... So, wait. The passenger window is rolled up, and the driver's side window is, like, rolled halfway down. That's, like, super weird. And, like, it's not a, not a detail that I thought I would be noticing. It's not a detail I thought the truck would have. But let's go ahead and fire it up and take it into the garage and see what we can do with it. Definitely has that classic, uh, classic sound. All right, so let's go ahead and see what we can do in terms of power. So we've got stock, performance, and, well, I should say stock, upgraded, and performance. Really the exact same, um, like, kind of performance tier system that we see in all of Frog's trucks. So upgraded would be kind of for towing, and performance would be basically send it mode. And I think we're probably just going to go full send it mode for this one because it makes sense. At least it makes sense to me. If we're trying to test this thing to its maximum capability, you might as well go for the craziest option. Now, I will go ahead and run the off-road transmission first, but later on down the road, like when we go to do the bridge jump and stuff like that, we will run the highway box for higher speed. Now, suspension-wise, you have a pretty standard, I say standard, it's not necessarily quote-unquote standard, but if you remember Frog's newer Ram, this has a very similar uh, suspension setup selection to that truck. So, stock, lifted, stock tow, lifted tow, crawler, and the Flexi Boy suspension, which for our purposes right now, we're actually going to go with lifted tow, because as you guys will see... You can do some really interesting stuff with it. So, you start off with a 41-inch bogger. That's sort of your default tire. Then it goes down to down to a 34-inch um, generic off-road tire. A studded generic off-road tire. So, you could really use it in any and all environments. But it's a dually setup. Then, you go to a 45 bogger. Then to a 39 generic off-road tire dually. Then to a 47-inch bogger. And then to a 43-inch studded generic off-road tire dually. Now, the 43-inch size is the biggest that you can go in a dually. However, you do have a pretty good array of tires that go all the way up to 47 inches in height. So, heck, if you wanted to make it into a mud truck and do 47-inch boggers, that is, again, that is completely up to you. You can do that. So, let's go ahead and actually, for the purposes of this test, we're going to go with the 43-inch dually setup. And stock winch, and we've got, okay, a couple of different custom bumpers. This is where it gets a little interesting. So you've got custom bumper number one with a winch and two D-rings on the front. You've also got another one without the winch, but it has a push bar. Stock bumper and then bumper weight can be applied to any one of these bumpers, which is actually very, very nice. And then you have the dually fenders for the back, which we are absolutely going to do. Toolbox, which we are absolutely going to do. We've got gooseneck hitch. Now, we are definitely going to do the gooseneck hitch. And the gooseneck hitch is actually going to... Well, actually, you know what's funny? We're already down here at the bottom. We've got the gooseneck hitch, and I've forgotten something very important. Bumper weight. But we can do bumper weight a little bit later with the DevTools garage outside. Now, exhaust is really cool because you've got an axle dump exhaust, which sits all the way at the back. I'm going to try and see if I can rotate the camera around where you guys can see it. Right there. You've got a hood stack, which we have to rotate the camera back around to see that. But there we go. You've got twin hood stacks 
square cut stacks, which I'll have to rotate back to the back of the truck for you to see, which they look really, really good. And then regular stacks. I'm going to go with the square cut stacks on this one because I think they look really good. And the only wheel option you have for the dually setup is fuel full blowns, which are fine. Like completely, like they're great. It's a great wheel setup for the duallys. Although it would be nice to see in the future, maybe some other wheel selections in terms of duallys. Now this one, unfortunately, it seems as though it won't let us paint it for whatever reason, but we're going to go ahead and take it outside the garage and see what it's all about. Now, I'm sure that the, the whole thing of it not being able to be painted is just like a weird glitch with the mod, and I'm sure it's something that Frog's going to fix. So let's go ahead and fire it up and see what it can do. God, it, it just rolls so much coal. Like, the thing is literally so incredibly huge, though. Like, with this suspension setup and the tires, I mean, can you imagine? I mean, I know it doesn't look that huge in SnowRunner, but if you think about it in real life terms... A second gen with 43 inch tires and a dually setup, it would be absolutely huge. Absolutely enormous. Now, we are definitely going to need the lifted gooseneck for this setup because of how high we are. And let's see, we, we will need the bumper weight, but let me actually move, let me move the other second gen. This like stubby little single cab is hilarious. Single cab short bed, it's absolutely hilarious. All right, we're gonna go ahead and change back. Now, all of these suspension setups do have the ability to also change modes, which means you can lift them a little bit, although I wouldn't really recommend doing that from a towing standpoint. It just won't really work out for you. Now, we are going to go ahead and throw the bumper weight down on the front, which when you have the gooseneck attached, will actually bring the truck just about level again, which will help you a lot. And it'll help keep that front axle on the ground, both for steering and traction purposes. So, you can either do four units of cargo on this trailer, like for example a full load of medium pipes, or you can actually load it up with vehicles and pack them as you see fit, which that really applies to almost any vehicle that you can fit between the edges of the trailer. Now, these pipes are not necessarily the heaviest thing in the world, but they're also not the lightest, and so I figured that they would be a really good option to use for some testing. Go and ease it on out of the garage. Now, the reason why I wanted to test this thing with cargo is because, I mean, we know it's going to be crazy good without the cargo. We know it's going to just, like, you know, especially with the, the max performance tune, it's absolutely going to just rock it down the road and just quite quite literally just rock it all over the place. But, oh, doing a little bit of a wheelie there. Oh, come on. No! Yeah. There, so it will, even with the max power tune, it will still stall out. That's actually really interesting because I know that, like, I know there are people out there that are going to be like, well, this thing is just, like, wildly overpowered. And the thing is, is it more powerful than a standard in-game truck, like, with the performance tune? Sure it is. But I don't think it's overpowered if it can still get stalled out by cargo. You know what I mean? If it can still get stalled out by the weight of cargo, I don't think it's overpowered at all. I think it's actually in a really good place in terms of balance if you want to have a lot of fun with it as well as haul around some, you know, haul around some supplies and other vehicles. So let's go ahead and continue our test and let's throw it into the mud with a trailer and see how it likes it or see if it hates it. It could, it, it could absolutely despise it. It could, it could get very upset with me. Rolling in sixth, not too bad. It actually gets to sixth gear really, really quickly. Impressively so. All right, into the mud, throwing it into high. That's impressive in the shallow stuff. Front axle coming off the ground a little bit, but again, in the shallow stuff, pretty impressive. All right, medium mud now. Oh my god. Oh, come on. Easy. Or maybe not. <laughs> easy. Or maybe not so easy. Yeah. So, if you dive into the mud... If you dive into the mud in high with a trailer behind you, you will sink. It's just up to you to decide whether or not you actually want to dive into the mud that's, you know, especially deep mud with a trailer behind you. Because if you do, it's uh, it's up to you to get yourself out again, put it that way. That's why I'm really, really glad that we have an extended winch line. Now, low range works pretty well. If you go into the mud with a trailer behind this thing, I would definitely suggest just going right in in low. Don't even try to barrel through it in high if you've got weight behind it, because if you try to barrel through it in high, 
with weight behind you, you are, you're asking for trouble. Put it that way. You are genuinely asking for trouble. My god, is it a good looking rig, though. It is a genuinely good looking rig. I absolutely love the way it looks. I really don't think there's anything that, I, I guess what I'm trying to say here is I feel like the, this second gen and the R&R second gen really both apply to sort of two different aspects, right? I feel like this one applies more to the heavy haul aspect and the R&R second gen kind of applies a little bit more to the off-roading and trail riding aspect. Although it can, you know, it can do hauling. I think, you know, that's more of a adventure truck, whereas this more this is more of a haul truck. Well, easy. I do wonder though if this will beach it. I feel like it could. I mean, the possibility is there, but I don't know. I mean, we are running the Max Performance Tune, and you guys know that the Max Performance Tune on Frog's trucks is pretty dang formidable. Come on. Oh, she's like halfway up. Come on. All right, slight winch pull. I'm going to give it just a slight winch pull. Very slight, very slight. Come on. It just had to get the rear axle up and over. The problem is... I don't think we'll be getting much much further on through there. I think it's probably worth pulling the plug on that test. Yeah, I think it's probably worth pulling the plug on that one. I just wanted to see how far it would go. And granted, it will make its way pretty dang far before it gets beached. But still, it's like... It's, it's not necessarily a test that I would recommend doing in a truck like this. But even knowing that it can make it halfway through without having to winch... I mean, it did have to winch after halfway, but... Knowing that it can make it at least halfway through without having to winch is pretty impressive. It's time to go ahead and throw the highway gearbox in this thing and take it off the bridge jump. Now, don't worry. I am not going to leave the uh, the short bed out of the equation, or at least the single cap short bed out of the equation. We're going to go ahead and throw the highway gearbox in this rig, and that should get us a, yep, seventh gear in automatic mode. We already have the max performance tune. And what I'm thinking is, since we have a fully, like, loaded down trailer behind us, once we start going down the hill, we'll go ahead and throw it into neutral and then just let the weight of, really, the weight of the truck and the trailer just, you know, use gravity to push us the rest of the way. So it's going to make our way to the top of the hill, and we will at least do one jump in the single cab short bed. I really do think that the single cab is going to go a long way a long way off the bridge jump i really do wow it really holds its momentum up hills well like really holds its momentum up hills super well oh boy i'm like i can't see come on go oh my god whoa hey it kept the cargo it kept the cargo and barely got any suspension damage. That is ridiculous. That is huge. That is not what I expected out of this thing. That's not what I expected out of it at all. Now, real quick, I want to see what we could do with the stubby little short bed. So I'm going to go ahead and do a full build. Performance engine, highway gearbox, and we're going to go ahead and do the flexi suspension. Then, we're going to do the biggest tires we could possibly fit. 47-inch boggers. By far the biggest tires that we could possibly fit. We'll run... Eh, we'll run that custom bumper. And I'm thinking hood stack. And we'll run the machete wheels. And I think we'll go ahead and make this one... Eh, we'll make it red. Might as well make it red, right? Yeah, this thing is going to be silly. Tiny little truck. Absolutely tiny little truck. Giant tires and tons of power. It will potentially fly over the other truck, but I don't know. We'll see. The other truck, I didn't end up putting it in neutral because it it wasn't even in seventh gear until it was basically leaving the jump. So I was like, well, there's no point in putting it in neutral. It's still accelerating through the gears. All right, make my way up the hill. And I feel like, I don't know, part of me feels like this thing will go farther, but part of me also feels like it might not go as far. I don't know. I'm going back and forth about that. Oh, God. But whoa! Thank you for not ending up in the trees. I really appreciate that. 
I really, really, truly appreciate the fact that you did not end up in the trees just now. All right, there's sixth already. I can't see where I'm going. There's seventh. Oh! Okay, landed on the back half of the trailer. I'll take it. I will absolutely 100% take that. But if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Hit that like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I will see you guys next time.